Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Keychan10 here, and we're back at it again with more Horizon Forbidden West. We just completed the Sea of the Sand Squid uh, mission, uh, so we got Poseidon back. So now we're gonna head back to the base, probably watch a bunch of cutscenes, and then um, after that, maybe go on to the next uh, quest here, which is called Seeds of the Past. Um, nah, I don't think I'm going to do any side quests. I'm just going to record this cutscene here and uh, go on from there. So, mm. excuse me, Jesus. Mm. Excuse me. So we're going to go all the way over here. I know. But first, we got to find a uh, campfire. Look at this. Las Vegas, baby. I need to buy weapons, actually. What is this? Thunderbolt Shredder Gauntlet? This versus a... Uh, uh, can launch shock and piercing shredders that inflict extra damage to targets long range, 30 meters or more. Uh, we got the... Ice Storm. This is the... That's the warrior bow. We're fine. What's this? Ew. Resources. We could probably sell some stuff here. I don't know if I want to sell the legendary stuff. Selling. Setting for. Okay. Need those shards. We're gonna save these. <clears throat> okay. Gonna need a lot of shards to get this place up and running. Let's go ahead. I'm not wearing my headphones right now, so if like the sound from the speaker seeps through, forgive me. Oh, 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 oh. Damn it. I thought he would have had something. First, let's restock up on these things. I enjoyed this uh, area. Quick save. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the volume down just in case. I don't want it too loud that it seeps through. Alright, fast travel. We're gonna be watching some cutscenes here pretty soon. Um, how do I fast travel here? <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> I see you, champion. Sit, please. Oh, time for talking, unfortunately. I need some... This I really need some thunder weapons. I don't have any. Some lightning, you know? A rock. Bunch of rocks here. All right, back to home base. Pete's 
pizza? Apparently it tastes worse the longer it takes to be delivered. Or something like that. Maybe you can find the recipe? I think it was just flat bread. With cheese. And some sauce. I like it already. How about pizza? Where is our friend? I'm trying to get this. Can I get any resources? It's apparently not. Alright, so let's go talk to our companions. Start with Erend. Oh, I almost didn't see you there. Um, let's play strike. Hmm, nothing really to talk about. Back to studying it. Back to our other companions here. Hope you didn't run into too much trouble out there. I better get going. Make sure to stay in touch. Looks like no one has any new new dialogue to, you know, talk to talk about. She has okay. a side quest that I haven't done yet. I should probably go. I'll be here if you need. All right, we go on to to Gaia. Getting to the heart of it. Welcome back, Aloy. I see you have recovered Poseidon. I have. What is this, though? I only have one survey drone. Which was this land here. We're gonna talk to her in the des in the desert. Okay. <clears throat> Aloy, can you come downstairs? Beta has something you need to hear. Okay. I'll be right down. Got it. I'm back, Gaia. Hello, Aloy. What would you like to discuss? Um. So, I guess Beta's here to stay. I gave her a focus. Told her to talk to you to see if she can help. She's... Not what I expected. What were you expecting? I don't know. Someone more helpful, I guess. And less pessimistic. It is true she overestimated our progress. However, it is also worth noting that her confidence in your abilities emboldened her to escape the Zeniths. I guess so. Give her time. She may yet come around. Alright. Let's talk about our companions. How's Catalo doing? I have detected that the loss of his arm still deeply pains him. In an effort to remedy this, I have discussed a potential solution. Ooh, is he gonna get a metal arm? I believe he will want to fill you in on the details. A solution? I'll check in with him when I can then. Yeah. How are things around here? Zoe has been studying the morphology of her land gods in an effort to understand their sickness. Without the abilities of Hephaestus, I am unfortunately unable to correct their programming. However, due to Zoe's perseverance, we may have a workaround. Yeah, she filled me in. It sounds promising. Mm hmm. That's a side quest. Varl and Zoe seem to like spending time together. Indeed. While studying old world data, 
Zoe discovered references to a dietary lifestyle known as vegetarianism. Oh no. She appreciated the similarities with Utaru practices and encouraged Varl to try out No, this don't do it, Varl. And how did that go? I believe they have agreed to disagree. <laughs> Errand. How's Errand handling things? He is becoming increasingly accustomed to use of the focus. After an initial incident. What did he do? He unfortunately crushed his first focus as he attempted <laughs> to affix it to his temple. Amongst oh, a God. number of Osaram curses, I believe he also blamed the focus for being dainty. He has given repeated assurances that it will not happen again. Well, good thing we have a lot of extras, I guess. So there's a few people here now, and they're learning. All about you, the ancient world. Almost like what was supposed to happen before Apollo was purged. Yes. While the loss of the Apollo database was catastrophic, there is still much that can be gleaned from the data you have uncovered. For instance, Varl has been reviewing the last recorded entries from those who perished during the Pharaoh Plague. Hearing their hopes and fears made him quite somber. Anything I should be worried about? I do not believe so. I have elected not to intervene. To allow him to process this on his own terms. These are some new ones, right? Hmm. Huh. What can you tell me about Demeter? Demeter sows, fertilizes, and tends to plant life. So once I bring it back, all the blight out there will start to get better. While permanent restoration requires the abilities of Hephaestus, I may be able to improve conditions in the region for a while. However, a word of warning. Like Aether and Poseidon, Demeter's response to my query was highly irregular. Alone and frightened, it may have taken measures to assure its oh, security. No. Okay, I'll keep my guard up. The missing subordinate functions. What can you tell me about them? Artemis rewilded the Earth with a variety of animal species. Eleuthia was responsible for gestating, nurturing, and acculturing a new generation of human beings. Apollo was tasked with preserving, organizing, and disseminating vast archives of human knowledge and cultural achievements. Unfortunately, all archived Apollo data was purged on the 2nd of February, 2066, by order of Ted Farrow. Farrow, huh? I really hate that guy. Understandable. He appears to have been pathologically narcissistic, impulsive, and unstable. All three of the missing functions have already served their purpose, or were prevented from doing so. Do you still need them? Restoring their remaining elements would increase my heuristic processing density, empowering my overall function. Unfortunately, as we now know, they are in the possession of Far Zenith. Oh, Far Zenith. Attaining them in the short term is very likely impossible. I guess our best shot at recovering them is by taking over the Zenith base. But yeah, good we'll luck. Hephaestus and a bunch of combat machines to do that. Correct. You mentioned that the superstorms have subsided. Is that ether at work? Yes. Thanks to Ether's capabilities, weather patterns in the local region should mostly stabilize for the time being. All right. Well, that's a relief. It'd be nice not to have to fight my way through a storm anymore. I will continue to stabilize the atmosphere for as long as I can. Thank you, Gaia. Why did Ether take up residence in an ancient war museum? As with the other subordinate functions, Ether needed to install itself on a processor with adequate storage and power. The one in the museum appears to have been sufficient. 
given that the holographic displays were still active. So Ether was assured it could stay for as long as it needed to. Correct. Very smart. Though it is curious that it chose a place surrounded with the ancient ruins of aircraft. Maybe it also felt at home there. Were you able to make use of Poseidon? Yes. Many rivers, streams, and lakes associated with the regional watershed have been detoxified. As a result, red algae growth levels have seen a marked decline. Nice. According to my so data, fast. however, it appears a localized occurrence of red algae continues to persist near the coast. Maybe I'll look into it when I can. We gotta go to the coast. So, Poseidon spent the last 20 years hiding out in Las Vegas. From the data I found, it seems the city had an advanced water reclamation system. Is that why Poseidon went there? Most likely. In an effort to protect itself, Poseidon sought out a safe harbor where it could access water supply functions. There, buried and encased in a protective dome, it could guard against any threats. Like three Osirum showmen? <laughs> I suspect that was not the first time it felt the need to repel trespassers. Yeah, it's been there for a while. So, once Hephaestus has been recovered and merged, you'll regain the capacity to mass-produce machines at cauldrons around the world. Yes, and to program their behavioral routines, or even control them directly. So you could build an army of machines, attack the Zeniths and take them out. It is in my nature to take any and all necessary steps to preserve life on Earth. He's not going to do it. Life above all. So yes. Once I have been empowered with the capacities of Hephaestus, I could design, build, and command such an army. Given the nature of the far zenith threat, doing so may be our only option. I must admit, however, that I have misgivings about using such technology to kill, no matter how aggressive the enemy. That's good. It means you have a conscience. As Elizabeth intended. Indeed. God, that's a lot. We want to read all that, guys. Beta believes the Zeniths want to use the terraforming system to wipe out life on Earth. Start over. So they can build it how they want. Further supporting our hypothesis. Why? Given their technology, they could wipe out the tribes of the world by easier means. And if they're the same people who left Earth a thousand years ago, wouldn't they want the biosphere to be as it was? It is likely they adjusted to different planetary conditions in their colony on Sirius. They may be trying to recreate that environment here. Turning Earth into a new Sirius. Their own personal playground. These bastards. So the Zeniths are the same people who left Earth. Physically immortal. How'd they figure it out? From what we know of Far Zenith, it is plausible that prominent geneticists and engineers were offered a place aboard the Odyssey in exchange for their expertise. I mean, superhumans. time, technology, and resources, any challenge can be overcome. Like how Minerva eventually generated the deactivation codes for the Pharaoh Plague. Exactly. The Zeniths. Gerard, Eric, Tilda, Verbena. Beta said they were some of the most powerful people on Earth. Do you know anything about them? Unfortunately, no. My personal database is limited to those who worked on Zero Dawn. Additionally, it appears Far Zenith was quite secretive about their members. Only one, Oswald Dalgard, was ever publicly known. Oswald. Right. He was the spokesperson back at their old launch facility. What we can conclude from your and Beta's experiences is that the Zeniths are ruthless in pursuit of their goal. 
To protect life on Earth, they must be stopped. The extinction signal didn't just wake Hades. It made every subordinate function self-aware. Why? I have wondered this myself. So far as I can tell, Hades was the sole target, and the partial sentience imparted to other subordinate functions was incidental. A signal that precise would require thorough knowledge of the system. How could the Zeniths know that? From the records on your focus, it appears Far Zenith had an informant during the development of Zero Dawn. Hank Shaw. He was supposed to steal a copy of the system for Far Zenith, but Elizabeth and Travis Tate caught him first. Yes. It is likely Far Zenith acquired knowledge on the system's design through him, despite his failure. A whole lot of information to take in right now. So from what Beta told me, I guess we can assume the Zenith's technology is powerful in all sorts of ways, right? Yes. As your encounters with them amply demonstrate, they appear to make extensive use of robotic servitors. Further, they seem to be equipped with some kind of protective energy field that shields them from harm. They seemed indestructible, but that weapon the rebels used stripped their shield somehow. Throughout history, Every defensive technology has eventually been defeated by an offensive counterpart. While we lack the anti-shielding weapon, were I to absorb Hephaestus and utilize it to create a large force of combat machines, no shielding could withstand such an assault indefinitely. Damn. So there's hope. Always. So this facility, the Regional Control Center, it was meant to oversee the terraforming system? For the local region? Yes. Had humans received their education from the Apollo database, they would have then been guided here to assume operation. As that never happened, this place remained vacant. Until Minerva decided to settle here. So I guess this room was meant to keep an eye on conditions outside? Yes. From here, the facility's operators would have been able to observe weather and machine activity in Damn. real time. Is this the real headquarters? It may be possible to restore more of this room's functionality should you find and reconnect additional camera feeds. Oh god, another side quest. I'll keep a lookout. More side quests to do. So the Hades Proving Lab, where I found the Gaia Kernel, it used to be a Pharaoh research facility? Yes. Prior to appropriation by Zero Dawn, the facility was used to engineer and test advanced computer viruses. It appears to have been one of many research initiatives by Pharaoh Automated Solutions. I guess it wasn't enough to build automated killing machines. He wanted viruses to infect them with too. So, a while back, before the battle at Meridian, I went into Banuk territory. I discovered another AI there, one not related to Zero Dawn. Cyan. It was created to oversee operations for a volcanic stabilization project, and it spent the last thousand years in isolation. I'm guessing you didn't know about it? No. From the data on your focus, it seems that Cyan was cut off from the outside world. An effort by its creators to protect it from the Pharaoh Plague. Any chance it could help us now? I have already attempted contact, with no success. Given its previous experience with accepting an outside network request, I imagine it is unwilling to do so again. Right. Because last time Hephaestus enslaved it. Well... That's too bad. I think the two of you would have had a lot to talk about. Imp Cyan. There was an ancient tank embedded in the bulwark, buried under a bunch of boulders. Any idea how it got there? During the Pharaoh Plague, the U.S. military resumed the use of human combatants, 
As automated machinery was These are all from my my quest that I completed. The vehicle was I should have come back here. Automated war fleet. After every mission. So they fought against the Pharaoh machines in the valley. Until the mountain was blasted apart and buried them. When I dove down into Vegas, I found data about the man who built the dome over the city. Stanley Chen. It turns out he was a member of Far Zenith. But if he loved Vegas so much, why did he abandon it? Why not try to save it? Their core have proven to be exceptional survivalists. Faced with overwhelming odds of extinction, they chose to flee. Even still, what he achieved... Water to the wasteland, an entire city brought back to life. A thousand years later, the whole place was still on standby, just... Waiting for someone to come along and wake it up. When we were at the facility where we found Beta, there were records that said Far Zenith were researching embryogenesis. I know they traded their ectogenic chambers to Zero Dawn, but why were they researching it in the first place? At this point, we can only speculate. Perhaps at one time they meant the Odyssey to be a colony ship, necessitating such technology. As their goals evolved over time, so did their areas of research. So they got more selfish as the risks of staying on Earth kept rising. Dude. That's a lot. Gaia? What was Elizabeth like? Her presence is interwoven with my memories. The moment I came online, she was there. We exchanged greetings names, then set to our task. It was the first of many conversations. I enjoyed being in her company, listening to her stories. She was my creator, my guide. Your friend? Yes. When I reviewed the data on your focus, I was saddened to learn of her fate, though I am glad she made it home. I deeply wish she did not have to be alone. She was okay with that. She gave all of herself. The only one who could. Thanks, Gaia. So, Project Zero Dawn. The greatest minds in the world. All working to build the terraforming system while the Pharaoh Plague devoured the planet. What was it like? Personnel worked in rotations at all hours of the day. Resources and technology were secured from across the world. Within a month of the project's conception, I was launched and began my education. Elizabeth encouraged me to spend time with the rest of the Zero Dawn staff. She said it was important to experience many personalities and perspectives to aid in my emotional development. What were they like? Scared. Hopeful. Determined. They were hurtling toward technological achievements on a scale never before attempted. I owe everything to their dedication. It's crazy. She's just an AI. I guess I should get going. As you say. Be well, Aloy. Alright guys, now we talk to Beta. Oops. found that recording from the data on your focus. She's been watching it a lot. I think it helps calm her. You know, I used to watch this a lot too. Whenever I wanted to take my mind off things. Daddy sure does love his little big... 
But there's something you need to tell me? While you were gone, I came down here to check on her. Then we started talking. Right, Beta? She's been thinking about how to capture Hephaestus, studying the data Gaia gave her. But we started talking about some other stuff. You know, just getting to know each other, right? And then she told me that one of the Zeniths might be different from the others. Oh shit, Kill finally. Them. You saw her at the Hades Proving Lab. Go on. On the way to Earth, the Zeniths never showed their faces. My servitor caretaker referred to them as my benefactors and promised I'd meet them someday when I had learned enough. At least in it, Tilda was waiting for me in a virtual replica of a house on a cliff overlooking the ocean. It was beautiful. She showed me paintings, books, media files. We met there in secret many times. But a few months later, it stopped. Can you tell us why, Beta? I found some data about Tilda at the Hades Proving Lab. I think she was the liaison between Far Zenith and Zero Dawn. She knew Elizabeth Sobek, that's for sure. Maybe that's why she reached out to you? What else can you tell us about Tilda? She... liked to talk about her paintings. Paintings. What about herself? Did she ever talk about her life on Earth? How she joined the Zeniths? Something like that? She never said much about herself, and she hated it when I asked too many questions. But I think, back on Earth, she was an expert programmer, given that she built a data channel the other Zeniths couldn't detect. Is there anything else about her that we might be able to use to our advantage? She was the first real person who ever bothered to speak to me. I wasn't really assessing her for strengths and weaknesses. Jesus. You said that Tilda reached out to you using a data channel? It appeared in my training interface as another assignment. When I opened it, there were a series of intermittent glitches. I realized they formed a transpositional cipher. Instructions on how to open up a new virtual space. When I entered it, my training interface disappeared. Instead of the usual holographic teachers and files, I was in a perfect recreation of her home. And huh? you're sure the other Zeniths never knew about it. To them, it looked like I was still in training, toiling away, alone. Okay. You said Tilda showed you paintings and let you access media files? Every time we met, she showed me mm -hmm. a new painting. I, I think she was Dutch. All of her favorite pieces were from their golden age in the 1600s. Portraits, allegories, ships at sea. She had so many. Did it interest you? I liked her media portal. It had so much more than my training interface. Clips, shows, hollows. My favorite was this one called Second Time Around, about a family whose kid comes back after disappearing during the hot zone crisis. Right, but did this portal have anything about the Zeniths themselves? Anything we could use? No. Any information about them was redacted. Everything's always redacted, would you? So Tilda set up a secret virtual space where she could talk to you, a house on a cliff. Then later, she cut you off. But other than the fact that Tilda knew Elizabeth, you don't know why she did those things? I don't, okay? I thought of every possible reason that would make her leave, but whatever I did wrong, I don't know what it is. Wow. When I finally met the others, she ignored me. I acted like the data channel never existed. None of this even matters. Tilda's the same as the others. It won't help us defeat them. Okay. Let's leave it at that then. Okay. Well, that was a good talk. 
good conversation there. Oh, the What's clipping. Wrong? I'm trying, Laurel, but she is tough to take. I'm out there in the wilds, risking my life every day, and all she can do is hide in there and tell us how hopeless it all is. I'm sorry, she's had a rough time, but she is really not helping right now. Hmm. You always seem to be on top of everything, so I sometimes forget about what you've been through. I mean, it wasn't that long ago you were so banged up you couldn't even walk. About that. When I pulled you out of the water back near the proving lab, you were muttering Rost's name. You never talk about him, but he raised you, trained you. You must miss him a lot. Of course I do. But I don't have time to think about that now. I need to get back out there. Okay. I'll keep working with Beta. Gaia says she knows a lot about Zero Dawn. And maybe she just needs some time to adjust, and then she can help us with Hephaestus. Sure. But I won't hold my breath. All right. <laughs> We gotta go to uh, Demeter's coordinates. So the old ones had cows and sea cows. So now, what is our quest? Seeds of the past. But they didn't look the same. We got a bunch of cutscenes here. There he is. He's Looks finally like back. I was able to unlock that door. That door. There's a lot of equipment in here. Gaia, what was all this for? This room was designed for management of the facility's vast sea banks. From here, control center operatives would have monitored new crop rotations into the automated farmlands, oh. now known as Plain Song. I see. I see. What can we make? To this console, there are still thousands of plant samples stored deep below the facility. I could ask Gaia about them the next time I talk to her. So we got all these cutscenes here. Our next quest is Seas of the Pass. We gotta get Demeter, one of uh, Gaia's lost sub. Subordinates functions. So we gotta do that next. Then we have to do, we have to talk to these guys. All these cutscenes here. I guess that's gonna do it for this video, guys. A whole lot of cutscenes. Um, I got cut off a little bit. I lost signal, so I had to reinstall Rex at Central. I don't know why it does that. I haven't, I haven't touched it in a long time. Because of the holidays, I was busy. But yeah, next video will definitely continue. We'll go ahead and um, talk to our companions and uh, do the main quest. I'll see you guys in the next episode. If you guys did enjoy that, please hit that like button. If you can, I'm not forcing you to, but that would help me out a lot. Thank you guys for your time. You have a good night. <laughs>